Okay, before we get started, I want to show you how to open your uh, project here that you've created. So, because I forgot to do it in the last video, so I'm going to do it right now. Cause, um, I want to show, I'm going to post a little warp here. So, for those of you there at the beginning of lesson two, you can warp here for the, the first like couple minutes here. So, the first thing you're going to do, you're going to click on the start here. Go to all programs. Go back to Microsoft Visual Studio 2010 Express. Then open up Microsoft Visual C++ 2010 Express. We open that up. One way to open this up here is click on first program here. That's under recent projects here. In this case, my name happened to be first program here. Whatever your name is, whatever you named yours here, it should be on the recent projects here. And you will get this here. And this is the this is the code that we get at the end of lesson two here. So if you're at lesson if you just started lesson two here, this is gonna be your ending result. A second way to open this up here, if let's say you open it up the same way, and it is not under the recent projects here, we click on file, we click on open, we click on project solution, and uh, we go to where our uh, program was here. In this case, Yours might be under the default C drive here. I decided to save mine under the external hard drive here, which I always will. I always save my stuff externally. Then um, I save mine under a separate folder called C++ Lessons here. And it makes an entire folder with all kinds of files in it. We're going to open that one up here. Notice this is the name of my first uh, program here, which is called First Program. I can open it up this way. That's way number two. So if you're coming from um, if you're coming from the beginning of lesson two, I'm going to post the link right here to jump you back to the ex to uh, the exact spot where you left off here. So you can go ahead and click here as a shortcut. Okay, so now let's begin this lesson here. And um, just to show you one more thing here, if we could uh, nah, let's forget it. All right. So what I want to go over variables here. What's a variable? A variable stores information. That's it. So we have all kinds of variables in C++ that can store different kinds of information. So in this lesson here, I want to go over just one variable here. One variable type. The first type will be called the int type. So the first thing I want to do, I want to type in INT. Now INT stands for integer. An integer is a number um, and uh, it's a whole number and it also is it can store negative numbers and zero here. So like negative three is an integer, seven is an integer, zero is an integer. It's whole numbers and it's opposite and their opposites here which is just an integer. So first I'm gonna make it INT and I'm gonna so that's the integer type here. There's all different kinds of types here, but we're going to use int for right now. And then after we do that, we're going to give it a space, and we're going to pick a name for our variable here. The name I want to call my variable right now is called apples. Once we are done uh, giving our variable a name, we give it a semicolon, and this is a program statement here. What we have done, we have just declared a variable, and well, I declared a variable called apples. The next thing I want to do, I want to assign my variable a value here. And I can only assign this variable here an integer type here. So how do we assign apples a value here? Well I'm going to show you. You can type in apples. We hit equal. And I want to give it a number. So let's say I call it 3. So apples is equal to 3 here. Now, just to give you a heads up, this is not algebra here. Apples equals 3 is not like an algebraic equation here. In C++, this is going to be called the assignment operator. So I want to show you this in a second here, that the left side of this equal sign has different properties than the right hand side of this equal sign here. So, just uh, that said, let me move on and I'll come back to this topic here. 
So first I want to output something here. I'm going to use C out, which stands for console output. I'm going to use the insertion operator, and I'm going to type in apples here. This apples is not in quotes here, so notice that this is not in quotes, kind of like the end line thing. ENDL is not in quotes and apples is not in quotes. But apples is referring to our variable that we made as our own. This is our own little little uh, syntax here, and it's called apples here. So if I run this code here, I get 3. Let me make this just a little bit smaller here so we can see. <clears throat> so we get 3 here because it only prints the value that apples is in here. So basically we stuff 3 in this in apples here. So now if we put 7 here, it'll print out 7 to the screen here because apples is equal to 7 here. So we can use these here. So we can kind of we'll end up using calculations with them later. We can do all kinds of things with the variables here and then they're an essential part of programming. Every programming language is going to have variables that you can make and all kinds of things you can make. And this is just one of them. The next thing I want to do, I want to show you, I want to come back to what I was talking about with this left hand and right hand side of the equal sign here. Now, to keep things simple here, if I just pressed 3 is equal to apples here, that is not the same thing. As I said before, this is not an algebraic equation. It's an assignment operator here. The left side of the equal sign is going to have different properties on the right hand side. Notice the compiler is going to have a problem here. It says error off the equal sign here. Left operand must be an L value. We'll go over that later. For right now, just keep in mind that um, we're going to keep our variables on the left hand side here. Apples is equal to a value here. So to clarify this here, whatever value is on the right is going to be assigned to the value on the left. And, notice there can, and there can only be one thing here on the left side here, but we'll, that's going to be in the next couple lessons, I believe. Okay. So now that we got this far, we, we can just print this out here. Now, just to wrap this tutorial up here, I want to make another variable here. So let's say I make another variable called oranges. I also want to assign oranges something else here. Oranges is equal to 5. I can also output oranges to the screen. In this case, it outputs the 5 here. Well, what if I want to say, okay, just to soup this up here, to go over our C out statement. So this is kind of like the review session of the, of the tour. I can say there are oranges here. Now notice that R and oranges are going to be stuffed right here. It says there are oranges here. It says there are 5. Because it's, first it prints off there are, then it prints off the value of oranges here. Notice that there's not a space between the R and the 5. So to fix that here, I can say there are here. Now it says there are 5. Alright. Well, just to make this a little bit cooler here, I can put in quotes oranges here. There are 5 oranges here. Now notice that the 5 and the oranges do not have a space between each other here. So I can put a space right here to resolve that issue. I compile it again. Now it says there are 5 oranges and everything has a space between each word. So does that, does that kind of make sense, the Cout statement here? So hopefully the Cout statement is starting to make more sense here. It's going to be an essential part of printing things to the screen here. And I'm going to be using it in every single tutorial here. We're pretty close to every single tutorial. So we'll get real good at it by the end here. And I want a semicolon right here. Now, just to wrap this up here, this will be the last thing. I want to use both of my variables here. If I run this here, 
it'll say there are oranges, there are five oranges, there are three apples here. Well, notice that there's not a space between the oranges and the there here. Well, we never gave it a space, right? Well, to solve this problem here, I want to put an end line this time here. So I'm going to, in between here, I want to end the line. There are five oranges, there are three apples here. Okay. So that's a little bit of practice on our C out statement here. So we can print all kinds of things to the screen here. And in the next tutorial, I'm going to continue talking about variables here. Because there's still some things that are a little fuzzy here. That, that are starting to make sense. So hopefully, uh, from the from the first tutorial here, we under hopefully understand that everything inside here, everything that we're going to be doing for the next for the next several lessons here is going to be inside this int main thing here. So everything that's going on is going to be inside this int main here, and we're not worried about anything else that's outside of that. Okay. And then uh, hopefully, what you got out of this lesson is that when you assign a value to your variables here, the variable is going to be on the left and the value is going to be on the right here. And we'll go over how this works later on here. So I hope this tutorial was helpful and hopefully you will continue on to the next tutorial and we'll go over a little bit more.